This isn't for the metro. <laughs> <laughs> pandemic, travel has been pretty disrupted. But like so many other things, not everyone wants to go back to how it was before. So during the times when we are allowed to travel, I think it's the perfect time to try something new. I'm Sarah and I'm going to share what I think is the best way to travel this year. First I'll tell you exactly what I mean by that and then I'll go into the reasons why I think this enhances holidays. Blame it all on the establishment so, so a few years ago, I decided to give up flying for holidays. And since then, whenever I want to go on holiday, I'll travel by land or sea, mainly on trains or ferries. The furthest place I've got to without flying so far is Istanbul in Turkey. So technically, I've got as far as Asia. But I've also travelled to Germany, Austria, Spain, Italy, among other places, all without stepping foot in an airport. Now, if someone had told me that five, ten years ago, I'd probably be pretty shocked, because the default way of going on holiday for me and my family was always to fly. But since giving up flying, my relationship with travel and my holidays have actually been better. So now I'll tell you the reasons why. Whether it's the views from a train window or the opportunity to stop over in another city for lunch on the way, when you don't fly, you get to experience more. I've been on a train journey where I've had lunch in Paris and dinner in Milan, and another where I've boarded a sleeper train in Paris and woken up to views of the Pyrenees from my bed. I've also met some lovely people on these no-fly holidays, sometimes because I was sharing a room with them on a sleeper train, or because they just struck up a conversation with me in the restaurant car. Travelling by train rather than plane offers more opportunities for experiences like these, which I think can enhance and enrich your holiday. When you fly, have to trek from your home to an airport which lies miles away from any city centre. And when the plane lands, you'll still have to wait for your passport to be checked and for your luggage from the baggage carousel. Then you'll probably still have a significant way to go until you reach your hotel or wherever you're staying. But if you're getting the train, it's far more likely that you'll be travelling from one city centre straight into another, which for me has generally been far more convenient. It's not always guaranteed, but usually avoiding the airport means your travel time is going to be longer. But for me, this has always been a benefit. I've found that I enjoy being able to suspend the rush of everyday life and have time to slow down and space for reflection. The journey essentially becomes part of the holiday. And trains go at the perfect pace. It's fast enough so we don't get bored, but slow enough to identify objects. We get to witness brief glimpses of other lives. The exact moment two people embrace at a train station, a lamb running after its mother, or the moment a woman lowers her water can onto peonies in her front garden. Travelling slowly has always given me more freedom. Seats on trains generally have more room than on planes. You can get up and walk around, you have access to your luggage at any time, and sometimes if there's a nice cafe you have the option to have your lunch there or at your seat. You can also bring your own food or drinks from home. There's also no airport security, so no worrying about liquids, and it's easier to bring your bike or pets with you too. There's no need to turn your phone on airplane mode when you don't fly. Most trains these days are for Wi-Fi, so you can catch up on some work you've been avoiding or watch the next episode of your favourite show. So although I enjoy having the extra time on no-fly holidays, it's not actually always the case that taking the train is going to be slower than flying. Journeys from London to Paris or Amsterdam, for example, are going to be faster on the train because you don't have to travel to and from different airports. You don't have to leave an extra two hours to allow time for check-in and security at the airport. So less time faffing in the airport and more time to read or just enjoy the view as you pass through different landscapes. And although most of the journeys I've taken have cost more to take the train compared to flying, there have been a couple of occasions where it's actually been cheaper. My trip to Ireland, for example, when we checked the price for flights at the same time, it was actually cheaper to get the trains and ferry. And there's also been other trips where the cost for flying and taking the train has actually been about the same. Now that's not always going to be the case. It really depends on where you're going and what time of year you're travelling. But don't be fooled by airline adverts. I don't think it should be assumed that flying is always going to be cheaper than taking the train. I've had so many train holidays now where I've come home feeling way close to the person that I've been travelling with. Now obviously that's not all down to taking the train, but I do think that trains foster a way better environment for conversation than planes. I feel like it's a combination of the views and the extra time you have, but there's a few occasions where my friends and I have found ourselves chatting solidly for hours when travelling by train. I just don't know anymore, but 
risk that new variants of coronavirus pose to travel plans at the moment, it's always good to know that if you've got a trip booked and you need to cancel it, you can get your money back, or at least change the date and time that you're traveling. And it's a lot easier to do that when you've got a train ticket rather than a plane ticket. Airlines really don't like people cancelling, so they make it pretty hard to get your money back or change your flight. But train companies don't seem to mind as much. I've just had to cancel a trip to Zurich and Milan, for example, and I only lost £22 of the whole journey. Because train booking websites like Eurostar or Trainline make it so easy to either refund your ticket or change the date and time of it. So the reason why I decided to give up flying and why I'm making these videos is because of the terrible impact that flying has on our planet. Flying is the fastest growing cause of greenhouse gas emissions globally, and unfortunately there's no green plane waiting in the wings. And to give you an idea of just how much better getting the train is, a single return flight to Berlin clocks up the same amount of carbon as 13 return trips by train. And if you're flying at least once or twice a year, like I used to, then flying less is one of the most impactful things you can do to take action against the climate crisis. And that's because most flights are taken by a relatively small number of people. Here in the UK, for example, 70% of the flights are taken by just 15% of people. And half of the people in the UK don't even step foot on a plane in any given year. And most of these frequent flyers are at the higher end of the income spectrum. And you see the same picture around the world. And if you're wondering if offsetting your flight could be a loophole out of reducing how much you fly, I will be doing another video on why I don't think that's the solution. Carbon offsetting is basically the idea that when you buy your flight, you can pay an extra few pounds, which goes towards planting trees or other carbon positive projects. So it essentially counterbalances the emissions from that flight, but it really doesn't do what it says on the tin. So if you're like me and you love traveling to new places and experiencing new cultures, then really we should help protect them. And flying less is key to doing this. So I hope this was helpful. Please leave any thoughts or questions you have in the comment section below. Also, so if you're interested in seeing what these flight free holidays actually look like then I'll link to a couple of videos below but I'll also be uploading videos in the future which show different journeys that I've been on where I've taken the train but otherwise thanks so much for watching if you made it this far and I'll see you soon Don't you